Grand Prix motor racing is an industry that generates billions of dollars and entertains millions of spectators or television viewers around the world on any given weekend. Its focus is the Formula One Grand Prix car, a projectile that owes as much to aerospace technology as it does to the cars that we drive on the road. Everything has to start somewhere, like these single-seaters from the 1930s, when racing cars and road cars had begun to diverge onto their very different paths. In this program, we're going to take the road less travelled and follow the evolution of the Formula One car as we know it. It was the German manufacturers who took the biggest step forward in those early days. No compromises are needed when building racing cars, and the Germans made none. Success on the racetrack was their only objective. Money was no object. In 1947, the International Automobile Federation laid down a set of rules aimed at encouraging development of racing cars while still establishing some controls on spending. Formula One was created to provide a level playing field for anyone wanting to get involved in Grand Prix motor racing. The skinny little rear-engined racers of the early 60s replaced the meaty front-engined cars of the previous decade, but posted better lap times thanks to superior handling and better power-to-weight ratios. Midway through the decade, however, both the fans and the drivers were demanding more horsepower for the premier category of motor racing. New rules doubled the permitted engine size, and so began the next stage in the evolution of today's Formula One cars. Three-litre V8 engines initially powered the cars of the 70s. Later came years when a thousand horsepower turbocharged cars ruled the roost, before sanity prevailed and the turbos were banned. Ferrari remained faithful to its V12 engines for many years, but switched to a V10 in the mid-90s in order to stay competitive. From early in that decade, the V10 proved itself to be the most efficient engine configuration for Formula One. It's more powerful than the V8s and more compact than the V12s. Now everybody uses V10 power, with Mercedes-Benz engines currently being the most consistently successful. They powered McLaren to consecutive world championships in the last two years of the 20th century.